in the breakout star this Notre Dame attack needed. Last year, Notre Dame didn't struggle for goals, but they didn't really have any one player score them in bunches. A lot of three goal a season contributors, no real one 10 goal a season contributors. Rue has four in just the last two games. If he can keep this form going, if he can keep on stacking goals and maybe a few assists in there as well, that could be a big boost to this Notre Dame's team ceiling. We'll take a quick break, but come right back for ACC soccer as the Fighting Irish take on the Titans here on ACC Network. I've got home internet from T-Mobile. It only costs 50 bucks at T-Mobile. Just one cord to set up. Say goodbye to that truck. Oh, oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. They won't raise your rates at T-Mobile. You'll get a great deal every day. Home internet from T-Mobile. Just 50 bucks a month. Keep punching holes in the earth, eventually it's going to punch back. Nature isn't a balance, it's a war. I'm telling you this one to us. Rated E for everyone. Play closer. Closer to car. Closer to the roar. Closer to Grealish. Easy. <laughs> Closer to Jumper! Play closer to these icons. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. EA Sports FC24. Play closer on PS5. Your first home sees a lot of firsts. From first loves <laughs> to first steps. Sure, it can be a handful at times keeping you up at night. Come on now. But with help from the Home Depot, Thank you very much. you'll find the confidence to create the first place you call your own. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Tourists. Tourists that turn into scientists. Tourists photographing thousands of miles of remote coral reefs that can be analyzed by AI in real time. So researchers can identify which areas are at risk and help life underwater flourish. Life needs great teammates. Be there for yours. With retirement, benefits, and life insurance products, Symmetra is your teammate for whatever lies ahead. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium. Let's take a look at our starting lineups before kickoff. First up is the Titans of Detroit Mercy, JJ, who stands out here. The big switch, Robbie Spradlin the third in net for the Titans today. That was a change that happened in the middle of their last game against Marquette. It looks like they're going to roll with him for the future, at least for the immediate future against Notre Dame. He wasn't the goalie they started out the season with, but appears to be the one they are going with right now. Now we'll take a look at the 20th ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish, 2-0-1 so far on the year. Who's a big player for them tonight? On the camera, Sebastian Green replacing Patty Burns in the lineup. Burns, a uh, missing game, slight knock will be back for Clemson, we were informed. But uh, Sebastian Green, a player that is going to replace him in this kind of precautionary role. Uh, they don't want Patty playing too many minutes. They want him to be replaced by someone they can rely on, someone who they know can fill in that role, and that is Sebastian Green, who will be in that fullback slot. Both well, teams will huddle up as we'll be getting ready for kickoff. This is the 14th time in history that these two teams have faced off. The first time coming in nearly 28 years they last met in 1995 on this very field. The Irish hold the all-time series lead with an 11-2 mark. Look for Notre Dame to try to get off on a right foot early on here. Marquette scored just 2 minutes and 27 seconds into that game, that last contest that Detroit Mercy played, and that kind of set the tone for what would eventually become a 6-0 route. Notre Dame's going to want to start off on the same foot, really set the tempo early. They did it well in their last contest. They're going to look to do it again here. Copeland's got the ball between his feet as he will be ready to kick this game off. The Titans starting this year at 0-3-0. 
A tough loss in their last time out against Marquette. A six to zero defeat. As a deep boot there is headed off by Russo and out of play. So Phillips will toss it in. Scramble for the ball is won by the Irish. Interested to see how this three at the back system for Detroit Mercy looks against Notre Dame when Notre Dame has the ball. You know, obviously a system that its biggest flaw, at least for Detroit Mercy, has been transition. They've you know struggled to get back, but I think they prefer the game to be a little more settled, even though Notre Dame also would probably prefer to be possessing the ball for most of the game. But here's KK Balfour in that half space that he loves so much. Notre Dame's gonna want to make the most out of those chances. Going up field in hurry as here is Russo. Dancing, looking for somewhere to go, and that ball is headed out of bounds, and it will be a corner kick for the Irish early on. That's just what you want to see from Notre Dame. You know, it's nothing too special, nothing too over the top. It's a nice, well-worked possession move, and they get a corner kick out of it and a chance to really put their stamp on this game early on. Before it will be the one to make the kick, and this will be an early test for junior goalkeeper Robbie Spradlin the third. That ball, however, is booted away, and a high kick ends up out of bounds, and so it will be a goal kick. Not surprised to see Notre Dame get a little creative with that without Patty Burns in the lineup. He's usually their you know, leading presence in the box, someone they can trust to always be physical, always get up and get in the, get in the, in the, in the brawl for the header. Uh, Notre Dame obviously doesn't have him in the box today, so I think they're going to try to be a little more inventive with how they try to get the ball in instead of just brute forcing it into the middle and expecting Patty to go up and get ahead on it. Now they're going to be a little more careful about how they try to find their man and find their marks in the box. The Irish will look to balance how to deal without their starting senior, Patty Burns. The ACC all preseason watch list. will be out of play today as there's an early foul. Hard on Geralt from Sylvan. We'll take a second look at that one. You see here just a collision of bodies. Usually it's a bigger player versus little player. That time more or less the same size, but the referee's going to call that every time one player goes down in the collision, especially when one of them leaves the ground. Let's see what Notre Dame can make of it. Russo, after taking a fall on the last one, dances, passes it back to Gennenbacher. We'll work it back to Ferguson. Irish looking to find a hole in this Titans defense early on. A deep boot now as Ento tries to field it. Green will work back down there. Looking for space. A deep boot on net and Spradlin will field that quite easily. Keep an eye out for Eno Ento in this one. He came close several times on Friday, and he's you know, had a lot of moments this season where his pace has just been such a, his pace and ability on the ball has been such a weapon against teams and the ability to break teams down and attack back lines. Notre Dame wants to get him up and going. He does have a goal in the year, but it could have been a few more if he finished every chance he had. Obviously, no player is going to finish every chance they have, but Ento's a player that will get into spaces to score. Notre Dame's going to hope he gets into plenty of them today. Ento put up. Six shots in his last match against NIU on Friday. That was an Irish 1-0 victory off the boot of Matthew Rue. The only goal was. Northern Illinois match won that. I think it's notable for Notre Dame. Not because they you know, played better, which they, I believe in my opinion they did, and not that they won. But that was the type of match that last year's Notre Dame team didn't seem to win, and the one that the 2021 Notre Dame team, which made the College Cup, seemed to win every time. A game in which they controlled most of the ball, they had the better of the chances, but they didn't make any foolish mistakes. They let that game state be the defining factor of what would eventually become the final score. And, you know, a one nothing victory is not going to really stand out on the resume, especially against NIU in an out-of-conference game on a Friday. But it's the game you need to consistently win if you want to put together an NCAA tournament resume and a seeding resume especially. Notre Dame won those games all the time in 2021. And in 2022, those were the games they seemed to have the mental mistakes and would miss chances to pick up points. Irish kicking off the second half of their six-game homestand to start the year. Most of those opponents being out-of-conference opponents, except for their upcoming match against Clemson this coming Saturday. Clemson ranked near the top of most ACC preseason polls. And so a lot of these early season matches, as Brian Dowd feels that boot, and we'll fire it downfield. A lot of these early season matches will present 
That is good work for the Irish as they get accustomed and head into their ACC slate. Rousseau now gets a quick touch around midfield, passes it on to Bafour. Turned over as the Titans retain possession. It's interesting to see how Notre Dame's build out patterns uh, when they try to get forward or change without Patty Burns in the lineup. And I'll hold that thought. Here comes Ento and a quick boot, but that goes well wide. Back to the earlier point, without Burns in the lineup, that's a, you know, a, uh, like we just saw there a couple seconds ago, that sequence where before picks up the ball and then looks to the wing for the overlapping run of Green or, in prior cases, Burns. That's kind of Notre Dame's bread and butter, at least it has been this season, where they have Burns pull up in possession, so it only becomes, almost becomes a three at the back when Notre Dame has control of the ball. Can Green fill that role in the same way that Burns can? Can he find the same spots? That's what we've yet to see, because Burns obviously been a game-in, game-out starter. A deep goal kick will end up in the Irish having to scramble going backwards and they'll bout that out of bounds. It's another toss in coming up for Pearson and the Titans. A turnover as the Irish are marching back. Here is the star junior, Ruo. He'll pass it off to Before, who will go back to Ferguson. As the Irish look to move up in a hurry, and here's a deep pass. Trying to find Russo. Russo able to slow up and feel that, and he's able to try to get a kick off, but that will hit off the side of the net and go out of play. That's a great find there, Matthew Radovoisa. Not an easy pass to make by any means, but he spots the run of Russo. Russo knows where he wants that ball, and Radovoisa pinpoints it right there. Russo does well to take on his defender, get to the end line, but in the end, that's a difficult angle to get a shot on goal off, and all he can do is put it in the side netting. Rousseau was the Irish leading scorer last year with six goals. Still looking for his first goal on the year so far. Rousseau really came on strong at the back end of last season. You know, most notably the Michigan match where he recorded the hat trick. They're hoping that form can translate in 2023. Meanwhile, a quick rush here by the Titans. Working there is Phillips and he just will uh, Shoot that out of play. And so the one of the first shots on goal, or near the goal, for the Titans. That's a nice move there. Sylvain in the box, doing plenty with his feet, you know, trying to find space. Notre Dame staying compact, not letting him get by. But at the end, they do get a shot off. It's going to be Phillips to, you know, have a bending effort. Obviously, not the easiest shot in the world of trying to have to curl around the defender. But he does well to get the shot off and try to find the back of the net. Notre Dame obviously more than happy to take a goal kick there, but I'm interested to see how future moves get put together by this Detroit Mercy team as they look to break down a Notre Dame defense that's been quite strong so far in 2023. So it will be Ferguson doing the goal kick. Goalkeeper Brian Dowd had an issue with his knee over the past few weeks and is still near perfect health, but is still a bit slow to be taking punts and goal kicks. Meanwhile, Irish trying to set something up here. And so working deep. Titans trying to work it out of their own side. The ball will end up out of play and will go off an Irish boot last. And will retain in Titan possession. Four took a moment there to get up. I think he kind of looks like he kind of slid into the fence when he tried to win that ball back. But in the end, he's, he's up back on his feet. The player that Notre Dame wants to have at their best because when he's full go. He's a player that can really make stuff happen from that attacking midfield role. Someone who can drive the ball forward, hit the killer pass to break a defense open, and then also obviously shoot it himself. You know, really the type of player that Notre Dame needs to have uh, be dynamic in the midfield. Turnover there will give the Titans a chance to make something work, but they will instead turn it over by shooting it right out of bounds. And another goal kick upcoming. This time it'll be fired off quickly. Be handled now by Ferguson yet again. He'll shoot it down to Russo. Near midfield, Russo working around one defender. He'll find Rue. Rue trying to set up Ento. Ento in front of the goal, unable to put a perfect touch on that, and that boots it a little too far. But Rue now with a chance. He'll fire it out to Redis Boys, huh? Looking for somewhere to go on the far end. 
A turnover and a boot back downfield for the Titans. And that was the chance Notre Dame wants to have more of a nice, patient build up. Long ball to the box there is not as patient as I was just describing. But they didn't try to get it up too quickly. They waited for their spot to emerge. They waited for an opening to emerge. And that's when they hit the pass to try to break the defense open. There's no need to get overly aggressive. And just 10 minutes into a match, Notre Dame staying patient. I suspect they will stay patient, at least for a little bit. Obviously, if the still 0-0 at halftime, that might change. But as of right now, as both teams kind of feel each other out, throw their first punches, figure Notre Dame will stay a little more, more compact, stay a little more impatient, and wait for Detroit Mercy to try to press them, wait for that opening to emerge, and then try to exploit it. As Dowd will look to play that one. Facing close pressure from Sylvan. He'll boot it back downfield. The Irish were anything but patient in their last matchup against NIU, putting up 26 shots on goal, only resulting in one goal. Yeah, Notre Dame in their last match was, you know, I think that was, you know, though the scoreline perhaps didn't reflect in the same way IUPUI did, I think that was their best match of the season. Um, IUPUI, obviously, a lower caliber of opponent than Northern Illinois, but I think the way Notre Dame played against Northern Illinois and handled them was very impressive in a way, like we said, it's the type of game that they didn't necessarily win every time last year. To get a win and to stay compact in the biggest moments, especially when Northern Illinois pu pushed late, says a lot about the team. As there we see Ramsey fighting with Sylvan, and that will end up out of play. Irish have started all three of their games this year, taking the lead first, and have yet to trail so far this year. In large part why they moved up to 20th on the coaches' poll. Looking to start something here. Kennenbacher will find Ruo, who will pass it on to Russo. Back to try to find Ruo here as the Irish look to have something going. A defense there forces Ruo to boot that out of bounds. And that'll lead to another goal kick for the Titans. Yeah, that's great defending there. Ruo trying to turn the corner, trying to get by his man and Detroit Mercy, just uh, Casey McCarthy in particular, staying tight on him, not letting him by. See there, a well-won tackle. Gets to go off Rue's boot at the end, which is just a bonus. And a goal kick instead of a corner kick is a great result for a situation like that if you're Detroit Mercy. So Robbie Spradlin III will look to punt this one away. His first in-action moments last time against Marquette when he came in late in the game. Now Detroit Mercy looking to get something started in their offensive end. Phillips working against the end line. Trying hard to keep that one in. Get in, Bakker will fight him and knock him to the ground and we will take it away from him. Now Ruo trying to take possession. Instead it will be Titans possession. Ian Criello passes it on to McCarthy. McCarthy looks like we'll be wearing the armband tonight in the Oxac absence, however long that might be. A player that Detroit Mercy is going to need to be a central figure back there if they want to limit this Notre Dame attack. Still working around midfield are the Titans. Sylvan trying to find somewhere to go, unable to. Play near the end line, and that will end up out of bounds in the Titans' hands, however. Toss in here as before battles forward. Equinello will take it again. He'll find Phillips. Phillips looks for Zermano. Played now by the Irish. There's Rio. He's going to try to find Ento, but that will be a violation. Had Ento chased after it. The ball had a bit too much on it, and so Spradlin will look to boot it away. Hey. 
Bradley now working it to Equinello. Oh, and about a play, however, and Russo will toss that in to get him backer. Works it to Retta Voisa. Ends up in the boot of Ferguson. Now back to Gettenbacher. Works it up to Russo. Russo looking to try to set something up. He'll find Rue. Rue tries to put one on net. And a sliding play there by Green trying to get a ball on net. Unable to, and that will end up behind the net and another goal kick upcoming. Nice combination there by Rue and Russo. You know, Rue coming in from behind, Russo holding the ball up, being patient, like we said, not immediately firing this pass into the box, not trying to immediately go to goal. He sees that Rue's coming on the overlap, or the underlap in that case, plays the ball, Rue puts the ball across, and nearly finds Sebastian Green on the back post run, but in the end, a little bit too much pace on that ball across the box. But it's the type of move that Notre Dame will want to keep on getting, and the one that eventually you figure they'll convert. Now the Irish look to start something in midfield, but before falls to the turf as he is fouled. So an upcoming kick for the Irish. Redavoisa works it to Gennenbacher. Back to Redavoisa, back to Gennenbacher. Irish are coming off back to back clean sheets. Have only allowed one goal so far this year. That came against Indiana in their one-to-one -one draw against the then number two opponent. Spradlin will play that easy boot off the grass. Trying to look for somewhere to go, but here's Rue with an easy turn, and he shoots, he scores! So an early turnover and mistake by the Titans results in Rue continuing his hot streak, his fifth goal in three matches. Yeah, that's as costly of a mistake as they'll come by Detroit Mercy. Looks like it's just miscommunication between the goalie and defense as to when that ball should be played. Great win by Beno. He gets his foot in there, wins it cleanly, and Rue, from that distance, is never going to miss in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Just simple goal for Notre Dame and the type of simple goal that Detroit Mercy cannot afford to give away. Can't really tell if Goalkeeper gave that ball without uh, Zermeno expecting it or whether the ball was perhaps behind where Zermeno wanted it. But at the end of the day, Notre Dame doesn't care how they got the ball. It's a well-won ball by Beno and a well-finished ball by Rue and just a bread and butter goal for the Irish. And what an incredible stretch for Matthew Rue over the past three matches. Five goals, including the only goal scored in the NIU game. And he will take the Irish to a lead here. One to nil in this match. And so an early mistake by the Titans is punished by the veteran junior. And head coach for the Irish, Riley talked about it in their last matchup after NIU. Speaking of Rue, saying that he's been aggressive and has turned it up a notch. He's stronger, faster and has his finishing boots on. And there's another attempt there by the Irish, led by Russo, but it will result in a stoppage of play. Yeah, Rue looks very much like a developed player, like someone that's taken a step forward from last year where you know he was on the field, he was making in the right places, but couldn't seem to finish it at the clip that was maybe required of a player Notre Dame needed in a, in a season where they weren't scoring a ton of goals. Otherwise, this year he looks very much like that player, much more composed in front of net, and like Coach Riley said, just a little bit bigger, a little bit more physical. You know, the type of development you'll see in a player when they go from their sophomore to junior year, get another year in the training program of the team. Riley's spoken extensively about how much he values development. He wants players to be there for four years. He wants them to get a little better each year they're with the team. Bruza, shining example right now of that development with the program, a player that's really kind of improved a little bit physically and technically each year he's been with the Irish, and as a result, the production is ticking up as well. And a foul on Pearson there after he tossed it in himself. Results in the Titans retaining possession. This time, however, 
He'll hand it off to Zermeno to kick this one off. It's an upcoming free kick attempt for these Titans. And the first test of this outing for Notre Dame goalkeeper in his 44th career start, Brian Dowd. A long boot up, awaiting a header. It's blocked away, blocked away by another Irish defender. That was Matavoisa, and that will end up out of play and will result in a tight end corner kick. Nice routine there by Detroit Mercy, getting the ball to the back post. Sylvain, kind of on an island at that back post, does well to get up and put the ball across the box, only a little too high to find the head of McCarthy, who was kind of waiting for that second ball. But Notre Dame does get a, I mean, sorry, uh, Detroit Mercy does get a corner kick out of it. Let's see what they can create with this. And so the long boot, looking for a header, but there's a whistle before that ball even comes back to the pitch. And there you see Bryce Bonneau in some level of frustration or pain. He's having to talk with the referee. Let's see what the referee does here. Bonneau was none too pleased with, looked like there was just some extracurricular activity going on in the box while that ball was coming in. We'll see if any card gets given out, though I don't think there will be. You see here there's a tangle of bodies and looks like it is Sylvain that runs into Bonneau. So the Titan attempt at a corner will be for naught and the Irish will get possession. They're going to take a quick hydration break. And we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back here for ACC Soccer. Fighting Irish lead the Titans 1-0. to I've got home internet from T-Mobile. It only costs 50 bucks at T-Mobile. Just one cord to set up. Say goodbye to that truck. Oh, what a beautiful morning. They won't raise your rates at T-Mobile. You'll get a great deal every day. Home internet from T-Mobile, just 50 bucks a month. Rated E for everyone. Play closer. Closer to curb. Closer to the roar. Closer to Grealish. Easy. <laughs> closer to... Jump Play closer to these icons. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. EA Sports FC24. Play closer on PS5. PlayStation. Life needs great teammates. Be there for yours. With retirement, benefits, and life insurance products, Symmetra is your teammate for whatever lies ahead. Back here in sunny South Bend with temperatures near 87 degrees currently. They have instated hydration breaks which have just wrapped up and we're ready for action to resume. 24-49 left or, or to, so far in this first half of action between the Notre Dame Fighting Irish and the Titans of Detroit Mercy. Referees Taking a look at the monitor, I'm not sure if they're looking at something on that corner kick or something otherwise, but we'll see if there's any sort of activity after they step away from the monitor. It was Bonneau who ended up on the turf after that last exchange on the corner kick. Waiting a call from the referee. He's going to have a discussion with both managers. As 
he will march back onto the field. And it looks like play will resume without any cards being distributed. I'm not totally sure what specifically they were reviewing. We didn't really get a great look at what the contact was in the box. But it seems like it wasn't much based on that reaction for the referee. And as well as the coach's reaction either bench, no especially angered results to whatever the referee ended up telling them. So Ferguson will give that a long loop. Chased away by Ento. And booted back down the field by Spradlin. That will end up out of bounds and will be in Irish hands as Green will go for a quick toss in. He'll find Ento. Headed away there by McCarthy. It's unfortunate that last corner kick ended in a foul because that's the type of chance that Detroit Mercy needs to have more of and needs to make the most of if they want to stay in this game. You know, you don't really get a lot of corner kicks when you're not on the ball, as I'll see what happens here. But you don't get a lot of corner kicks when you're not holding much of possession. And when you get a chance like that and you give away a foul inside the box and it loses it, you know, it's the type of chance that you want back badly. The ball will end up out of play as we'll have Green with another toss in. Now they're going to work it back to Reda Voisa. We'll find Ferguson who will go off to Gennenbacher. Gennenbacher will look up for Russo. Russo will take it himself, try to find Ento. A header up and right into the hands of Spradlin, but in another really good chance there for the Irish. That's an excellent ball into the box there. It's not easy to put the amount of weight on that ball to have it both find Ento and then find his run at the exact moment it needs to. Just a beautifully weighted ball, and Ento tries to kind of floated over the goalkeeper, not to power on it, more of a finesse header, so to speak, and the goalkeeper does well to get off his line quickly, make the catch, and secure the ball. But nice work there by Russo to keep his head up, see the run of Ento, uh, make sure he hits the pass before Ento's offsides, and also find Ento in a place where he can get his head on it and not have it be too difficult of a header. Ento with one goal so far in the year on 10 shots. Meanwhile, the Irish on another rush here. Russo tries to fire that one in, but that will end up out of play as it'll be another goal kick for Spradlin. I'm not sure if Russo was trying to deliver a ball in the box or maybe try to catch Spradlin off his line. Regardless, looks like kind of miss hits it either way and just has almost like a half hit into the box where it's not on goal and it's not bending in the box like he'd probably want it to if he was trying to put a cross in. Ultimately well controlled by the Detroit Mercy defense. They'll see it out and they'll more than happy to reset. So the Irish so far with six shots, two of which have been on goal. Titans only with one and no shots on goal to test goalkeeper Brian Dowd yet. It'll be Phillips here with the toss in. We'll settle for Zemeno in front of him. Back to Phillips. Phillips will boot that out of bounds and now Russo will go for a quick toss in. He'll find Rue. Back to Russo. The Irish will work around. Work it to Radovoisa. Or rather Copeland over there. Copeland will take it yet again. We'll find before. But a battle there with Pearson results in the ball bouncing off of before's foot and out of bounds. Toss in here from Pearson upcoming. Our attempt there will end up out of bounds yet again. Still with, well actually now, in Irish possession. Toss will go back to Copeland. We'll find it to Ferguson who passes it off to Reda Voice. Huh? Haven't seen a sub yet by other team. Interesting to see when both managers pull that trigger. We'll see if a foul is given there. And it's not like the referee's going to wave it off. Plenty of objection from the Detroit Mercy bench. So a long run here by the Irish as there's Ento trying to look for somewhere to go. He's up against the end line, but that will lose possession as he falls down. 
And a quick rush attempt back. Results in Ferguson now getting possession for the Irish. See a little bit of physicality enter this match. In the first 20 minutes or so, we're more feeling each other out, trying to get some build-up going on both sides. Now teams are pressing a little more, bringing the game a little bit more uh, on ball, so to speak, in terms of how much physicality is occurring in the one-on-one -on -one battles, as that one's going to be off sides. Rousseau disagrees with the call, but the call is made on the field, and now the Titans will look to respond. Well, Sylvan, he's going to fall out of place, and foul will be called. Which looks like it's going to set up the Titans for an upcoming free kick. Good position for them here. Nearly in front of Brian Dowd's goal. The Irish will set up their own wall. Let's see what Detroit Mercy has in store for this last free kick. They had a well-worked routine on the last chance they got in a similar area, but obviously didn't come off. But they didn't earn a corner kick out of it. Let's see if they try to go to a similar back post, across the face of goal, sort of one-two routine. Zermeno boots it, and a long drive is caught by Dowd. He will move quickly to pass it to Russo. Russo will deal it back to Gennenbacher. Gennenbacher back to Russo. Credit to Zermeno on the effort, but I don't think I was have a shot that Dowd was ever especially worried about. Does well to see it all the way through and catch it. You know, not an easy ball to hit, at least on frame, if you're trying to shoot, but Dowd had it covered. Quick setup attempt, trying to find Ento there in the middle. Ends up turned over, but the Irish get quick position back before. Move it back, but another turnover by the Irish. So the Titans will work it back downfield. Irish able to get possession back. Work it back to Ferguson and attempt to reset. A deep boot downfield is chased down by Before, and Spradlin comes all the way out of net to deal with Before. Before falls to the turf. And it looks like it's going to be a free kick upcoming for the Irish. Strange sequence there. Spradling comes out of the box to, I guess, clear the ball. He couldn't pick it up. He's outside the box. But he doesn't get there in time. Then Before doesn't get the volley the way he wanted it. And then just turns into a, a battle. And Spradling, I guess, clips before in the lower leg, it looked like. And Notre Dame gets a dangerous free kick out of it. The Irish looking to make something work. A boot inside ends up being batted away and well out of sight. But a voice that will play it on the near side. Works it back down to Copeland. Or rather, Ramsey. Played now by Russo. He'll find Red Avoisa again. Ferguson now will settle it down. Look how many players Notre Dame has forward. And a run here by Ento. Tries to put one on net, but that will end up out of play. Russo tries to save it and puts a boot on net that is easily fielded by Spradlin. And that will bring up a goal kick for Spradlin. Number of subs being made for Detroit Mercy. KK before will also leave the field for the Irish. Wyatt Lewis, a player that got a lot of run out in Notre Dame's last match against Northern Illinois. Coach Riley clearly sees a quality player in him, wants to give him more chances to prove himself in this early season run. Now he's basically the only sub on the field with the first team. Let's see how he looks with a different 
cast the players around him. Usually he's in the game with more of the rotated Irish side. Now it's just him on the first side. Wyatt Lewis now on the field for the Irish. Well, Tim Alos comes on for the Mercy side. Here's Rue trying to make a quick shot attempt, and that's fielded quickly there by Spreldon in the third. Can't tell if that was a mishit ball into the box by Rue or a chip attempt. Almost was a very effective chip, but if Spreldling was well tight to his line and wasn't worried by it, but if Spreldling was off his line, I think that's fine in the back of the net. Regardless, nice work by him to secure the ball and redistribute it out. Notre Dame now back in possession, though. There's Copeland working now on the far side. And so battling for the ball. Into the game is also star captain defenseman, Patty Burns. Over plays Sebastian Green for the Irish. There's Reda Voison now looking to play it on the far sideline. Turned over now. As Sylvan takes a big hit there from Ferguson. And that will result in a yellow card for Ferguson, the first yellow card of this match. Yeah, very easy card for the referee to give there. Ferguson knows it all the way through, no objection to that card. It's just a simple body body flat foul. Gets in uh, Sylvain's way, doesn't let him dribble by, and as a result, Notre Dame turns what it could have been a very dangerous transition attack into a far less dangerous free kick from basically the halfway line. Notre Dame will take that trade off, even if it means a yellow card goes out to one of their center backs. So Sylvain takes a big hit there. 11 yellow cards were dished out in the Notre Dame NIU matchup. As it was a rather feisty affair. There's the first of this match so far. McCarthy will take this kick. He looks up to set up his lineup. Puts a long boot. And that will end without harm as it will roll out of play. So another goal kick upcoming for the Irish. That's why you take the trade off of the tactical foul in the middle of the field. Obviously, a one on three, which is what that would have been had he bypassed Ferguson, is not exactly the most high percentage chance in the world. But you'll take a free kick from the halfway line that eventually just goes out for a goal kick over that regardless every time. Foul there results in Irish retaining possession. Some objection by Zermeno. I think he was trying to say that. Russo just kind of pulled him down with him. Referee saw one body on top of the other, and it's never not going to call that. Lewis now all the way out to Russo. Quick boot ends up in Detroit Mercy hands. But they'll lose possession as Phillips will stray out of bounds. Hugging the touchline there. I think he thought he had a chance to break it open for the Titans, but the referee had other ideas. Looks like the ball just barely went over the end line as he maneuvered around the Irish defenders. A deep boot back inside, looking to find Russo there, but it's caught harmlessly by Spradlin before Russo gets a chance to put any head on it. So return offer here is turned away by the Irish. But Avoisa looks to try to set up any Irish forward, but is unable to find anyone, and it results in front of the boot of Spradlin. Their name really wants to find Russo in those long diagonal balls and get a run in behind. They've had some success, but for the most part, Detroit Mercy has done well to either keep the offside trap resilient and force Russo in a position where he's going to be called for offsides if he gets the ball, or just keep on tracking his run and defend the balls themselves and keep him out. Not an easy job when you're playing, you know, kind of that high line and Russo's trying to sneak in behind it, but 
overall, Detroit Mercy's done a good job to make sure Notre Dame can't exploit that, and they've kept him under control, despite Russo's done plenty of work running today, keeping them under control, even though his uh, effort has not been lacking. Plenty more subs being made now for both sides. As a header is played by Gennenbacher. Entering the pitch for Detroit Mercy. Number six, Alex Dyack. And number nine, Daniel Russo will Andres. leave the game for the Irish in place of Nate Zimmerman, the uh, freshman Dyack. forward. And number 18, Josh Hope. Well, I'll see Alex Dyack on the field for the first time today, a player that we Spotlight before the game has a penalty kick goal, one of just two goals Detroit Mercy has scored this year, captain of the team, and a player that I think is going to settle this midfield down a little more for them. Germano fires that boot high up in the air. Had an attempt by Sylvain, ends up nowhere, and a high boot there ends up well out of play. Certainly an ambitious effort by McCarthy from the top of the box on the half volley, but you know sometimes you ought to be a little ambitious if you want to pull an upset like Detroit Mercy are trying to do. That shot flies flies high, but they did get the shot off, and you know, maybe if the ball's hit a little more differently, that's hit the back of the net right now. It's not an easy shot to defend if you get the pace on it that he was trying to get on it. I think you'll, you can take a gamble like that in a game like this. This is a Detroit Mercy team with a lot of new faces. Starting with a new head coach. as the Irish are looking to work their way around. Back to Ferguson, the new head coach for the Titans is Nate Kopanek. As that boot will end up out of bounds and will be another throw in for the Irish. Always dangerous cross of Patty Burns was loading up there, good work to Keep the ball in front of them, defend it out. And Notre Dame will have to reset on the throw in. So Ferguson will look to find some Irishman deep as it's played there off sides by Zimmerman. Third offside now, Notre Dame. Titans doing well to draw the Irish off. and force these resets where they have a chance to build out a little better. You'll see here they have the goalie come out and take it so they can have you know, one more man as an option if they're able to set up in possession. Although it looks like they're going to go along with this one as Spradlin pushes the players up the pitch. This is a Titans team that lost their two top leading scorers from last year along with the 2021 Horizon League Goalkeeper of the Year in Jonathan Clearer, who left in the transfer portal. So a team looking to find some new big time players to fill up those big shoes. That's nice defending there. I drew Pearson, I believe, or actually John Nino, actually, who was the one who stepped in front of that. Spicer did well to read the pass, and that could have been a shot on goal if Nino didn't read that so well. As there is a header attempt by Sylvan that ends up being rejected. And so the Irish able to boot it back out. Calmed down now by McCarthy of the Titans. We'll look over to Nino. Titans looking to set something up. Offer is rejected and sent back out to Nino. Gennenbacher headers that one away. Matthew Andres applying pressure for the Titans. Was a nice spell there by the Titans who you know, were in possession. They didn't look especially uncomfortable doing so and they did well to try to find their spots. Notre Dame stays resolute, though. We'll see if they can create something here. 
A long run there to try to keep it in is unsuccessful. Aiellos, and so Irish will have yet another goal kick. The right idea there, the execution was just a little off. It's a difficult pass to hit. You can see the well work to keep his head up and try to find that ball to the far side of the field. And, you know, the run was well timed. Stayed on side, got behind the defender if the pass reached him, but just a little too much on that pass to make the move really work. But a good idea regardless, and one that Detroit Mercy will want to keep on getting as they kind of grow into this game. We had a chance to talk with Coach Kopanek before entering this matchup, and he talked about some of the players he looked to take over for the former Mitchell Lawson production, as there is Andres, one of those players that he mentioned, trying to work it in. Patty Burns will header that one out and temporarily give the Irish a chance to breathe. Yeah, you don't see Patty Burns lose many of those headers in the box. It's difficult to test them with those long balls, even though Detroit has had some dangerous forays with them. But with Burns back, the Natives probably a little more confident in their ability to dispel those and push it out. So Lewis working now. He'll send it off to get him backer. Coach Kopanek. Mentioned players like Matthew Andres, Alex Diak, and Casey McCarthy as the three captains for this Titans team, all of whom he expected to take a big role. We've seen a lot from Casey McCarthy so far. He was elected by the players as the captain despite only being a sophomore. And head coach Kopnick was very confident in his center back, saying that he has all the tools to be a pro. As the Irish work it now to Gettenbacher. 415 and counting left in this first half. Nate Zerman with a decent run closest to us on camera, but either it seemed that Gennenbacher didn't see him or didn't think it was the right angle to play that pass, but if that ball was played and if that ball did find Zimmerman, he had a ton of space potentially coming up on that flank. Spradlin will boot it away yet again. Found now by the Irish. There's Rue. He's going to slow up. We'll look to try to find Zimmerman, but a quick slide tackle there. Loose ball. Another boot before being sent out of the way. That was Nolan Spicer of the Irish trying to find one last chance in there. We'll end off the foot of the tight side. And so Gennenbacher will fire back a toss in all the way back to Ferguson. Strange sequence there. It seemed like the players on both sides almost had expected a foul to be called and just didn't come. And Spicer does well to capitalize and try to get a shot off. But Detroit Mercy responds well. Stays compact, keeps the ball in front of them, and blocks the shot as a result. And so now Zimmerman looks to play it in, but quickly blocked away by Zermeno. And booted away by Equinello. Made now by Lewis for the Irish. He'll send it back to Ferguson. Well, the Irish have started their season on a six-game homestand. The Titans have been on the opposite with four-game road sweep. And with the total of trips from San Francisco to Marquette to Notre Dame, they have traveled over 5,900 miles to get to this point. So a lot of travel for these Titans so far this year. Yeah, we talked about in the pregame, you know, having to play on the road that much this early in the season with a squad that's very new, very green, and still kind of gelling under a new manager. It's a test, and it's a, even though the results haven't come yet, it's something that I think Detroit is betting on being something that will make this team better as they enter the conference stretch. You know, the experiences you learn both just traveling with team in general but also playing you know environments that aren't rooting for you and trying to find answers on the fly it'll do them well 
And an attempt there to try to find an Irishman deep was unsuccessful. And so a run here now by the Titans, but that ball will end up in play. So the toss in now by Gennenbacher. As there, Bonneau was completely taken off his feet, and that will be a yellow card that will face Vincent Stockton. It was quick to the pocket there by the referee. Bonneau trying to just settle it down and play it back, and Stockton clips him in the leg. Bonneau goes down, and the referee goes to his pocket. So a free kick upcoming for the Irish has. Kenan Bakker will just hand it off to Ferguson. Let's see what they're trying to do. If they've got plenty of time on the clock, at least in terms of time to get a move going, but they'll go along with it. Try to play it to Rue, but we're unsuccessful. A number of headers now. Results in Eddie Burns trying to pick it up, but he's unable to. But the ball will end up out of play because we'll take a second look at that yellow card. And so now, Kendenbacher will play it with 27 seconds left on the clock. Turned over. And another foul here. I was going to be surprised if we didn't see a yellow for that one. That's a pure tactical foul. Looked like Detroit could have gotten a last second chance on because there's plenty of green ahead of the transition, should they wanted it. And uh, Zimmerman smartly just goes over the top. It's not the most complex foul in the world, but it's one that makes sure Detroit Mercy can't get an attack going. 15 seconds left. Now Spradlin will fire off a deep boot. Headed high into the air by Burns. And a high kick there. Attempt by Andrews. Ends up going out of play, and that will end the first half as the Notre Dame Fighting Irish take a 1-0 lead over the Detroit Mercy Titans so far in this matchup. JJ, what do you think of what we've seen so far? A well-played match by Notre Dame. They look like the team that's more comfortable in possession, but Detroit Mercy doing well to hang around, make the most of their forays in the Notre Dame third. Let's see what both teams do at halftime, how they maybe tweak how they come out. Let's see what this match looks like in 15 or so minutes. We'll be right back as we will have Matthew Rugol here. I don't know. I've got home internet from T-Mobile. It only costs 50 bucks at T-Mobile. They won't raise your rates at T-Mobile. Life needs great teammates. Be there for yours. With retirement, benefits, and life insurance products, Symmetra is your teammate for whatever lies ahead. Rated everyone. Play closer. Closer to curve. Closer to Grealish. Play closer to these icons. EA Sports FC24. Play closer on PS5. The future is threatened by enemies often unseen Stay alert, Marine. and unexpected. In the midst of an uncertain and evolving world, the need for Marines to defeat these shifting threats is critical because the need to ensure stability for our nation has never been greater. When there are battles to win for America's future, there is one constant, Marines. Shelves. Shelves that know what taste buds want. Shelves smart enough to see. Sense. React. Restock. So Caramel Swirl is always there for the taking.
And just like that, she starts to grin. The spark of something new begins. There's something in the water. On her own, she's in the zone. Resilience building in her bones. There's something in the water. On and off the boat, she flies. A force of nature on the rise. There's something in the water. Subway refreshed everything, and now they're slicing their deli meats fresh. That's why the new Subway Series subs are preferred by this QB. And preferred by his old backup QB. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Have you been behind me this whole time? Yep. Right now, get a free foot long at Subway, like the Subway Series menu. Buy one foot long in the app, get one free. For free. That's what I'm talking about. Order in the Subway app today. The student worker, we went over this. Where are you guys from? Tell, tell, tell them what it's really from. Oh, USA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long have you been a heart supporter for? Uh, ten Five minutes. Actually. <laughs> wow. I'm here with a uh, Chelsea fan. He's gonna be, he's gonna be the one crying at the end of this. I'm predicting a nice yeah. little two 0 victory for United. I don't, I don't nah, Chelsea maybe come on, come on Chelsea. We were like, come on, the come on the Blues. Marcus Rashford. We're saying so that goal. way. Sterling goal. We we're now saying Zermano, right? To the bike tour. Oh, are we racing? Are we racing? I mean, yeah. I was gonna say the rest. The rest now are pretty like self-explanatory. To go give them a little surprise. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Wyatt. Happy birthday to you. Hey. I've got home internet from T Mobile. It only costs 50 bucks at T-Mobile. They won't raise your rates at T-Mobile. You'll get a great deal every day. Rated E for everyone. Play closer. Closer to car. Closer to the roar. Closer to Grealish. Easy. <laughs> closer to... Jumbo! Play closer to these icons. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. EA Sports FC 24. Play closer on PS5. PlayStation. Life needs great teammates. Be there for yours. With retirement, benefits, and life insurance products, Symmetra is your teammate for whatever lies ahead. The future is threatened. By enemies often, unseen. When there are battles to win for America's future, there is one constant. Marines. Shelves. Shelves that know what taste buds want. Shelves smart enough to see. Sense. React. Restock. So Caramel Swirl is always there for the taking. BK Royal Crispy Wraps. Eat it with the meal or have it as a snack. Only $2.99. It's a hunger hack and it fits in one hand. And BK, have it your way. This isn't Charmin. No wonder I don't feel as clean. Hurry up, Dad. I'm trying. This cheap stuff is too thin. Here's Charmin Ultra Strong. Ah, my bottom's been saved. Woohoo! With its diamond weave texture, Charmin Ultra Strong cleans better with fewer sheets and less effort. What's everybody waiting for? This? <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? And for a shower fresh, clean feeling, try Charmin Flushable Wipes. And just like that, she starts to grin. The spark of something new begins. There's something in the water. On her own, she's in the zone. Resilience building in her bones. There's something in the water. 
on and off the boat, she flies. A force of nature on the rise. There's something in the water. You ready? You ready? Thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Thank you for joy. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Damn, the lines are moving fast today. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's show the camera some quick mats. Quick mats? Big brains. Alright, give me one. Bro, are you kidding me? 63, that's so easy. 14 times 12. Ooh, 40. 168. Boom! Yep. Good thing I put some lotion on. I'm gonna be in every single one of these. Yeah. Turn. Oh, never mind. Thank you for sunshine, thank you for rain, thank you for joy, it's a beautiful day, yeah. it's a beautiful day. So we're doing the movie tonight or what? Yeah, we actually should. What movie? Yeah, we don't, we have stuff later you gotta, give me, you gotta give me the ring. I know. I thought you were gonna yeah, test so me yesterday. <sighs> Damn, you were working hard in that technical, huh? <laughs> this is, yeah. <laughs> Rarely ever see you sweat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Almost left it. <laughs> yeah. Across, across. I listened to Rod Wave's new song today with the title Call Your Friends. If you have any friend you haven't heard from in a long time, make sure you call them. Words of wisdom from KK. He's gonna hit, right? Ooh, ooh, it's getting feisty. He's shooting that. Dan, is it stash thing? Cut the stash. Oh, yeah. You're gonna look like Borat at the end of the season. Yeah. That's so many cameras on us. I know, man. I feel like we're famous, bro. We're not famous. I feel like you're famous. Oh, sir. You got paparazzi following us. Bro, you do, bro. Irish. I've got home internet from T Mobile. It only costs 50 bucks at T Mobile. They won't raise your rates at T Mobile. You'll get a great deal every day. Life needs great teammates. Be there for yours. With retirement, benefits, and life insurance products, Symmetra is your teammate for whatever lies ahead. Rated everyone. Play closer. Closer to Kerr. Closer to Grealish. Play closer to these icons. EA Sports FC24. Play closer on PS5. The future is threatened by enemies often unimaginable. When there are battles to win for America's future, there is one constant, Marines. Shelves. Shelves that know what taste buds want. Shelves smart enough to see, sense, react, restock. Ah. 
so caramel swirl is always there for the taking. BK Royal Crispy Wraps. Eat it with the meal or have it as a snack. Only $2.99. It's a hunger hack and it fits in one hand. To 50 years with my best friend and my soulmate. <gasps> Quick! The quicker picker upper. Bounty absorbs spills like a sponge. And Bounty is two times more absorbent, so you can use less and get the job done with one. You've got a bit of your face on your face. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. To some folks, college football is a few humdrum hours on a Saturday. To the rest of us, it's sacred. It's a yearly pilgrimage to the hills of Rocky Top. It's having your own safe haven. Deep behind enemy lines. A place to reunite with your actual family of five and your chosen family of 105,000. So go on there, get together, and turn all those away games into home games in a verbo all your own. Football away, baby. Welcome back to South Bend as we're nearing the end of halftime for this matchup between the Notre Dame Fighting Irish and the Detroit Mercy Titans. I am Cesar Sanchez here along with my partner JJ Post. JJ, so far the Irish lead 1-0. to nil. What are some of the takeaways so far from the first half? Notre Dame, Notre Dame hasn't lacked for chances, but they've been much more deliberate than they have been maybe in past games and taking them. They've been patient in their buildup. They've waited for the right spots, and once they found those spots, then they've chose to push the impetus. They do have one goal out of it, but that was more just Bryce Minot winning a bad pass from a goalkeeper and converting an easy chance. But in possession, they've looked very patient, very deliberate. Let's see in the second half if they maybe push that tempo a little more to try to find that second goal and really break this game open. Now we'll take a look at some of the highlights of the first half so far. There's the first goal. You see Bryce Bonneau does well to win that ball. Gets it to Rue. Rue slots at home. Not complex stuff, but simple stuff that Notre Dame will take every time and stuff that Detroit Mercy can't really afford to do. You'll see here this time Rue makes the underlap run, gets a ball into the box and just flies wide of what was a back post run by Sebastian Green. Nice little chip ball by Russo and Enno. Ento heads it to the goalie. Again, Notre Dame has done well to pick their spots, find the right moments to probe to get the ball on net, but thus far, aside from the Benoit Rue connection, there hasn't been that finishing touch. Let's see in the second half if Notre Dame can break this game open because you do get the feeling that if Notre Dame finds that second goal, this game might become a little more of a track meet as Detroit, you know, because right now at the 1-0, Detroit is still very much in this game. You see here, four shots to seven, one shot and goal to two shots and goal. Detroit Mercy maybe hasn't had the lion's share of possession, but they are in this game. They have a very real chance to equalize. If Notre Dame gets a second goal, Detroit's going to have to push the tempo a little more and Notre Dame can open them up further in transition. We'll take a quick look at the top 25 of NCAA Division I soccer. As you can see, the top 10, including a number of ACC opponents, including the reigning champion Syracuse there at number four, along with Louisville and Wake Forest and Duke rounding out the top 10. And there you see there down at number 20 is the Notre Dame Fighting Irish going up there after a couple of impressive performances against IU and IU. PUI. And Notre Dame getting their due early. Last time Notre Dame worked their way into the top 20 was in 2021, at least when they worked their way in the middle of the season, when they kind of came on strong at the end of the year and got into the top 20 at the back half of the season. This season they played well in non-conference and they've gotten their reward early on for it. Let's see how they play. Now they have that ranking next to them. They have that credibility. Teams are maybe going to be coming in, gunning for them a little more. We'll see how that translates uh, come ACC play and come the rest of non-conference play. And so we are gearing up for kickoff for this second half of action here. As Notre Dame will begin with possession here in Alumni Stadium. Back on the far side, it's Daniel Russo trying to fight for possession. Ball will end up out of play. as the Titans will get their first toss in of the half. Phillips will toss it right back in after being knocked away by Russo. So 
Hope's looking somewhere, but he will turn it over to Lewis. Back down the field now comes Rue. Rue trying to find a slowing up Ento. Ento will look for before in the middle, before dancing around defenders. Puts up a boot, and that's headed out of the way. Lewis trying to find before yet again. Now entering the corner of the box, puts up a kick, and it's just off the paw of Spradlin. And so the Irish with an early chance there off the boot of before. A very nearly would be the easiest goal Matthew Ruiz scored in his career, but I don't think he expected Spradling to whiff on it, and the best roll just kind of comes right by him. And so Russo puts that boot right on net, but it results in the stomach of Spradlin the third, and so he will have an easy boot upcoming. We'll take a second look at that last chance there by before. You see here, it's put across the box, and the punch just uh, gets right by Rue, it looks like. Rue, if he had tracked his run, or trailed his run, I should say, a little more, maybe gets on to the end of that, but in the end, Spradling does just enough to punch it free. A boot down the pitch there by Spradlin ends up in the feet of now Patty Burns. Irish look to work it back downfield, but the result in McCarthy's hands is he's going to let it roll all the way back out the line and will be kicked off now by Spradlin yet again. And Oento always a willing presser on that front line for everything, but that one I think he, even he realized was a lost cause. Just lets it roll out. Notre Dame will reset. Detroit Mercy has a chance to set themselves up in possession. Let's see what happens now. Both teams had a chance to talk it over with their coaches, maybe tweak the game plan if they wish to do so, and if teams will come out and approach the second half a little differently. So the punt downfield by Spradlin. Headed away, and now Kennenbacher will look to play it. We'll move it back to Ferguson, and we'll boot it downfield. Headed high in the air by McCarthy. As Roof fights for it for the Irish, and that's booted out of play. Now by Lafayette. A quick toss in now as Russo's looking to play it down near the end line, and he's going to be tripped up there by Phillips, and that's going to roll out the line and will result in an upcoming corner kick for the Irish. See here, it's a challenge. He gets some of the ball, but he also gets the leg. Russo asking where the foul is. He got it in due time. Alert work, though, by Kyle Gennenbacher to get that ball up the line very quickly. He saw that Russo had made the run and did well to throw that ball down the field and let him get into space. Notre Dame wins a dangerous free kick as a result. So Baffor now to boot this one away into the box. And it's settled there by Lewis. Lewis puts up a shot, but caught there by Spradlin, and he will lay on top of it. Well worked by Spradlin there. Lewis strikes that ball quite well, especially off the chest on the volley. Spradling, Spradling, Spradlin, sorry, I should say, stays alert and just grabs it out of the air. Nice work by Lewis to control that. Gets it on target. In the end, it's right into the hands of the keeper. Not an easy shot to get on target, though. Meanwhile, Pearson looking to toss it in. Deep in his own end. He'll fly it high above his partner's hands, and it will end up in Notre Dame's hands as here's Baffor trying to find somewhere to work. Ball will end up in Gennenbacher's hands. Who works it up to Russo? Russo still searching for his first goal on the year. Will stay in Irish hands. This is where we enter Kyle ben Gennenbacher's range, but I don't think he's going to try for the long throw. At least doesn't seem like he is. Although maybe he's winding up now. But that's a weapon Notre Dame likes to use when they get in the area, the third, final third of the pitch. Gennenbacher's throw-ins almost serve the same purpose as a corner kick. And a long throw in here by Gennenbacher. Headed out, but an attempted boot there 
And finally, the Titans get it out of harm. So Baffor will try to do a quick toss in. He'll put a kick on net, looking for a header across the net, but Spradlin able to field that one. So the Irish playing much more aggressive to start this second half than they were in most of the first half. A battle on the far side results in Ferguson putting that out of play. As now the Titans will look to work it, but Lewis forces a turnover. It's Baffor. He turns it over himself. Finds it to Pearson, but then Baffor on the attack trips up Pearson. Yeah, Pearson does well there to sh shield the ball before putting some quality work to try to win it back. Pearson uses his body well, keeps himself between the player and the ball before it gets a little too aggressive, and Detroit Mercy, as a result, wins a free kick. And so now the Titans looking to work it, but turned over and recovered by Ferguson, but it looks like there's gonna be a foul there now on Ramsey for the Irish, and so good position here now for the Titans to have a quality free kick attempt. Yeah, that's good work right there because you know it wasn't bad defending by Burns and Ramsey. I'm gonna replay here. Now, Ramsey and Burns do nothing wrong necessarily. It's just a better move on the part of the attacker. See here, fights his way around Ramsey and Ramsey just out of frustration it looks like, shoves him to the ground. And as a result, it's gonna be a best free kick I'd say of the day in terms of position for Detroit Mercy. See what they can draw up. So Zermeno now with the boot, and it's actually going to be Phillips, and an attempt to go inside results in a header out, and Noel out of play. Detroit Mercy, it seemed maybe wasn't prepared for a corner kick, uh, a free, uh, sorry, say, should say a throw in in that situation. I think they were expecting a corner kick when that header came out of the box, and Looks like they're trying to figure out who they want on it. Looks like they'll keep it short, though. Pearson trying to play it back in. And an attempt on goal is unsuccessful as it will end up out of play and will result in another goal kick. Heck of an attempt, though, by Phillips to try to take a shot on goal from that range and especially trying to pluck the ball out of the sky and line himself up in the same motion. It's a difficult shot to get the power and the angle just right. And I think he is a little too much. This is a Detroit Mercy roster with 28 players from the state of Michigan. And Coach Kopinick said that that was a point of pride for them and will look to continue that trend going forward. 33 on the roster and 28 from Michigan. You always want to win your local areas in recruiting. Make sure you lock down the best talent that is in your immediate vicinity. Detroit Mercy obviously trying to use that as the cornerstone for this build and a very reasonable starting point because, you know, you only, you know, the players you want to have the most, the ones that are nearest to you, as that's going to be a good ball into the box. The Irish able to break up that pass, however. And so Burns will get that out of play. Coach Kopanek in his first year for this team in the Horizon League. That's a good step in McCarthy to clear that, but that's also a yellow card as looks like it was, uh, it was Josh, Josh Copeland that went up and didn't get the ball and definitely got the man. So a yellow card there for Copeland. And so far these Titans have been able to keep this game within reach as we'll take a second look 
at that yellow card. Copeland goes up for it. Looks like his arm clips maybe the, the chin of Lewis. In the end, it's going to be a, just a yellow, but that arm was raised a little more. We could be looking at a red card. Thankfully, Copeland does well to keep his arm attached to his body, and yellow is all it's going to be. A long run here now by Anto, and he's unable to get much of a boot on it as that will end up out of play. But they're going to rule that it came off the boot of a Titan defender, and that will result in a good opportune chance for the Irish here as there will be a corner upcoming. As before, we'll boot it inside, and that ball will pinball around. Shot on is blocked, and that will end up out of play. Another corner to come. Both teams plenty willing to... Take that shot on the edge of the box when the second ball comes out to them. The going to play this one quick. Baffour will boot it up. And a setup here for a header. No luck. Lewis headers it again. Bounced away by McCarthy. Battled there by Lewis. Turned over and recovered by Petty Burns now. Lewis trying to find Baffour. That will end up high and out of danger for now for the Titans. They will look to work it out as Sylvain turns it over. And Ferguson will look to reset the Irish offensive attack. Russo now working the ball in deep. He'll go back to get him backer. Troy Mercy upping the pressure here. He's going to make sure Notre Dame doesn't get any easy passes off when they try to play it back and reset. What a find. Good find there. Now here's an attempt, and it's blocked away by Spradlin. A phenomenal diving grab. As he just sends that out of play, which will result in an Irish corner. What a really good save there by Spradlin. Spradlin's answered the call tonight, a new goalkeeper's first start, and he's been excellent. Notre Dame with a, perhaps their best chance in the night that they haven't scored at least right there, and he's equal to it. So Baffour with the corner. Tries to get it into in front, but that will end up out of play, and so there will be another goalie kick. Ramsey facilitating that last chance right there of a pinpoint find to Russo. Does well the dance around the defender. Almost gets the curler off, but Spradlin was ready for it. Punches it free, but can't say enough about Josh Ramsey finding Russo and putting that ball right on his foot, keeping him on side and allowing him to get face towards goal and get a shot off. Russo with his second shot of the game there. He continues fighting for that one, and he headers that one into the hands of Spradlin. Troy Mercy going to try to build off on the back here and play it short. Coach Kopenick's team of the Titans trails in shots by 5 to 12 right now, but Pearson tries to send them down the field and get an offensive chance here. It was well worked by Jan Noon there to hold up the ball and progress it. It's not the most complex pass in the world, but the process of keeping the ball on his feet with defensive pressure is not an easy one. He does well to make the right pass and advance it as a result. And a centering opportunity there, but the high-flying Brian Dowd comes in to field that one and will allow no further opportunities for the Titans. Dowd always reliable inside his own box at getting out, claiming the ball. It's never been a struggle for him. He does well to command his area, and he comes out and grabs that one without issue. A very long toss down the field by Dowd. As that ball winds up out of play. An, impref an impressive performance so far by these Detroit Mercy Titans being able to fight off the Irish offensive attack and hang in this game, particularly coming off a very tough matchup against Marquette on the road. 
And they've been able to come into South Bend here against a quality ACC opponent and play a very strong defensive matchup. Out of Oysa, finds Lewis. Lewis trying to work his way in, but he will lose possession. Sylvain trying to work it near midfield. Detroit Mercy have responded exactly how you would want a team to respond to a big road loss. They've come in here, they look plenty confident, they don't look shaken. That last match isn't dwelling on them right now, they're just focused on being the team in front of them. And right now they're doing well to hold serve against a quality Notre Dame team. And Coach Kopanek talked about his pleasure with the way that team the team has bought into the process so far this year. He's got an experienced staff that he trusts a lot. He's looking at taking one game at a time, despite this team starting off the year 1-3. Meanwhile, the Irish looking to find a way to start capitalizing on a lot of their offensive attempts. We saw in their last matchup against NIU a large variety of shots as here Encho tries to play it in and tries to find Rue coming along, but that ball will end up out of play. Offside regardless from Ento. Does well to get in the right spot, but it's a quality high line. It's a well-played trap by the Titans who step up. Ento doesn't move himself back, and the four plays the right pass, but Ento is well offside there. And so for the Irish in their last two matches, this one and the Friday game against NIU, they fired off 38 shots, have only been able to find success getting balls into the back of the net off the boot of Matthew Rue as he has had two goals as there's going to be a penalty there as Spradlin falls to the turf on hard contact from Ento. Ento trying to create pressure there on the ball. We saw against Indiana that was something where Notre Dame was able to successfully cause chaos so to speak along the back line. Ento almost pushes the defender into Spradlin and himself hits Spradlin and Detroit Mercy earns a free kick, but Ento always likes to make that run regardless of how perhaps winnable that ball is, just to put a little bit of pressure on the goalie, make that pass a little bit harder when he's got a player bearing down on him. He forces the speed of the play to go up as that's a nice touch by Before. Before keeps it now. He will fire it back downfield. Allowing Spradlin to recover it. For the Irish as they are now four games into their homestand. Coach Riley has talked in the past about his pleasure with the way the home team and the home crowd environment has played into their favor. Had a very loud crowd in their match against Indiana. And yet another good crowd last Friday night against NIU. Notre Dame team that traditionally has been very good at home, especially in the later months. Usually that's when the advantages of alumni, at least training perhaps at an alumni, when the weather drops, becomes especially evident. But regardless, top-notch facility. Coach Riley as well as Coach Norman of the women's soccer team rave about the quality of the pitch. I mean, Notre Dame just feels comfortable when they're playing here. So Rue battles there, but that ball will end up out of play, and that will result in yet another corner kick for the Irish. So an increase of corner kick attempts in this second half for the Irish. As Baffor will look to fire this one off yet again. The long boot inside. Bounces off a number of heads and ends up well out of play and well down the opposite side of the field. Look at this run 
is not going to get to in the end, but impressive stuff regardless. And Ashley will force a throw in, or a throw in that initially looked like it might have gone to Detroit Mercy. It's going to be a Notre Dame throw, but regardless, the hustle to run down that ball is second and none. I think a lot of forwards there would have just, you know, wiped it off as another offside there for Ento. As many forwards there would have just wrote that off as a ball that's going to roll out and. That was a hard run to get to it. In the end, nearly forces a costly turnover for the Irish. So the Irish, despite being unable to add on to their total, have to be pleased with yet another strong defensive showing, especially led by their goalkeeper in that in his 44th career start, Brian Dowd. Having a returning goal is always something you want to build on. It's always something that offers you a certain sense of solidly along the back line. Notre Dame has capitalized off of that, at least so far through their matches. Meanwhile, Sylvain trying to find somewhere to work. Germano passes out to Phillips on the far end. Phillips trying to center it in, and a header attempt there. The results in that ball going out of play. There was Janown trying to send that one in. That was a nice move there by Detroit Mercy. They do well to get the ball, hold possession, work it out wide. It's well served in by Phillips, and Janoon gets the header on it, but in the end, it's just wide of the target. But that's the type of move Detroit Mercy wants to string together more of. Composure on the ball, working the ball to an area where there is space to kind of play in a ball into the box, and it's a good run by Janoon to find space himself inside the box. In the end, that final finishing touch is not there, but you keep on stringing those together, eventually it'll come. A long boot by Ferguson ends up out of play. So now the Titans look to play downfield. Irish coming off back-to-back -back clean sheets and Coach Riley talked about the helpfulness of communication, saying communication is key and we're building those relationships between teammates really well. As the Irish have limited these Titans to only six shots and one on goal. Sander Crooks now will Try to toss that one in. A fight on the sideline results in a Detroit Mercy ball and Crooks will send it back in. You do wonder at what point in this game, maybe it's now given the couple chances a few minutes ago where Detroit Mercy really ups the pressure and tries to go for that equalizing goal. You saw in the final 10 or so minutes against NIU that they the flip the switch really flipped and NIU really started to put pressure on, started to drive for goal and try to find an equalizer. We'll see how long the Titans wait before they themselves start throwing more people forward and really trying to put the pressure on. You can see they've slowly upped the ante in terms of how much attacking pressure they're exerting. We'll see if there's another level yet to be had as we enter the final phase of this match. Ferguson with a long boot downfield. Lewis will Taken, he'll try to find their Irishman. Back to Ferguson now on his own side of the pitch. Sent to Baffour. As Spreadlin, that's that long pass attempt away. Now here's Rue trying to make something work on the far end. Tries to center it, but ends in the boots. Of a Titans defender. Settled by Sylvain there as Sylvain works against the end line. Wow, on from Sylvain. Incredible run there for ending up on the turf, and he'll fall right back onto the turf again. Contact there with Radovoisa, but as you mentioned, an incredible run there down the field by. Sylvain. Sylvain was a one-man army on that attack. You see there, slide inside of one defender. There's the foul by Gannenbacher, at least the initial one. Then him and Radovoisa bang bodies as he uh, looks to get up. 
Really impressive run, though. Close control, the speed, and how he used that speed to kind of burst into space when the space was made available to him. He could have gone all the way if it wasn't for that quick foul by Gennenbacher to put him on the turf and allow Notre Dame to reset. So now Zermeno will look to fire it deep into Irish hand, but ultimately that ball looks like it will end up in Gennenbacher's hands. He's going to boot it to Ferguson. Ferguson will fire this all the way out. Near the 20-minute mark left in this second half of action as the Notre Dame Fighting Irish lead the Detroit Mercy Titans 1-0. Played there by Crooks and ends up out of bounds, but Crooks will throw it back in. He looks to try to find McCarthy. McCarthy will pass it on to Nino. Now worked forward by Zermeno. He's going to look back to Crooks. Titans looking to set something up and move into an attacking position. Here's one of the captains, Andres, who's rejected as Zermeno retains possession and fires it back to another captain in McCarthy. Detroit looks composed in the ball when they've picked it up. They don't look like they're in any or in any uh, need to try to drive the ball forward as that's a long ball is waiting for one to come. Fought there in the corner there between Gennenbacher and Crooks. A good battle there along the side as that ball has limited movement there as both players seemingly have their legs locked around it. Finally a whistle is blown as Crooks ends up on the turf. We'll see here what happened in that tangle of bodies. You see Gennenbacher going right at it with Crooks. And it's a battle that keeps on going. Wyatt Lewis eventually gets involved. Crooks not letting that ball up for anything. Eventually Notre Dame gets a free kick out of it. That's some level of close control, though, by Xander Crooks. Now Ferguson debuted it away and ends up in... F4's hands. But a voice of fires it back out to Ramsey. Ramsey looks for Gennenbacher. Moves it up now to Russo. Russo will fire it right back out to Ferguson. He will try to work the other side as Patty Burns now on a long run trying to keep this ball in. Whistle blown, however. It's like they're going to say he was offsides. I mean, Notre Dame is sixth of the game. Detroit Mercy doing a good job of tracking Notre Dame's runners and keeping those runners offsides. Notre Dame has tried a lot of diagonal balls today. But for the most part, Detroit Mercy has done well to keep their line organized and make sure that those runners are leaving early before the ball can reach them while they're still on sides. Bradlin will fire it back downfield. As there's Gennenbacher to send a return fire. Fielded there by Spradlin. And talk about the importance for the Titans to come into South Bend on a midweek matchup and play the Irish this tough. Yeah, regardless of the result that they'll get out of this, be it a point, be it no points, be it three points, something to be taken away psychologically about playing your fourth road game of the season against the top 25 opponent and looking very much like an equal partner in this game for at least the uh, first 75 minutes of it. That's something that even if it's not going to show up on the stat sheet, even if it's not going to show up on the record, coaches will use and they'll tell the team we can take something from this. Now the Irish looking to expand on their lead. 
They're going to work it back, however. Arvoisa trying to find space. Baffor now with a chance in the box, trying to center it and booted out of harm's way for the Titans. And now that ball turned over. Here's a chance for Ellos. Ellos making a long run. Trying to find a way to get a shot on net. Blocked away by Ferguson, but that's going to result in a corner kick for the Titans. Sigh relief there from Irish fans. That's a nice worked possession by Ellos, who keeps the ball at his feet and waits for his chance to take a shot. In the end, it doesn't really come. He kind of dribbles himself out of the best shooting range, but for a one on four, he does well to really keep the ball at his feet, work his way down the pitch, and eventually win a corner kick for his side. The sophomore forward, Tim Allos, one of those 28 players on this Titans team from Michigan with a great run there as the Titans look to set up something, and there was Allos yet again on the far side of the post trying to get a boot on there, but he will send that wide of the post, and we'll take a second look at that one. You see your nice ball right there across the box, and Alos arrives at the right time, puts plenty of pace on it, but it's wide of the near post. And again, sigh of relief for the Irish. And that may have been the best opportunity that Detroit Mercy has had all game, as Alos had a point blank shot from there in the box, but just wasn't able to get it on the net, and at the very least challenge, Goalkeeper Brian Dowd. Meanwhile, Baffor provides pressure for Crooks there in the Titans end. Not exactly hard hitting analysis here. We expect Notre Dame would really love to get a second goal and just kill this game off. Detroit Mercy with every passing minute seems to get a little more dangerous, seems to get a little more aggressive. Notre Dame can get a second goal, it would really go a long way in maybe calming this game down, settling their nerves and maybe pushing Detroit Mercy out of it mentally, because right now they know they've gone this long. They can just stay in it. They'll have a chance to win it, or at the very least, draw it. Ramsey working it back to Lewis, who will find Gettenbach around the far end now. And here's a drive there by the Irish, but that will result in a mix-up there. Another attempt here, here's Baffor trying to center it. But a slide tackle there, boots that ball out of bounds by McCarthy and it'll bring up yet another corner kick for the Irish. Great defensive work there by McCarthy and how about Baffor taking a rip from beyond the, I believe he was just outside the box and not exactly at an advantageous angle trying to catch Spradlin napping, but he doesn't do that. And Spradling's alert, punches it out, but another corner kick for the Irish coming. So here's Baffor on his second attempt. He'll fire it up. That one will bounce off of Petty Burns and end up in the goalkeeper's hands. Maybe it wasn't the best clearance in the world, but certainly was plenty effective as it goes right off the boot of Burns. Bounces out, Burns on the turf now. Looks like the Notre Dame trainer is going to be signaled out. Well, it's now Burns back on his feet. Recall that it had been Sebastian Green starting in place of Burns as he dealt with a lower leg issue. It's going to be a hydration break, I think, on the back of that. Both teams, I think, in... Need of one. We'll be right back after this hydration break. Irish lead the Titans one to zero. I've got home internet from T-Mobile. It only costs 50 bucks at T-Mobile. Just one cord to set up. Say goodbye to that truck. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Home internet from T-Mobile, just 50 bucks a month. Basically. Just. 
Back into action here in Alumni Stadium. Kennenbacher now with a throw in after the exit of Patty Burns from this game. He was able to jog off the field, so all indications are that he should be okay, but will likely take the rest of this match off to rest. And now a run here by Germano. A fight by Gennenbacher in the corner. And now comes Spicer back down the field. He's going to find Radovoisa. And an attempt there by Sebastian Green back into the game in place of Petty Burns. Ends up in a turnover as the Titans booted out of play. So no. ten and a half left in this second half of action. And JJ, what is the key for the Titans to try to scrap back into this one? I think you just gotta stay calm. They've done all the right things in the last five minutes. They haven't looked especially urgent, but they've still created chances. And I don't think there's anything you need to tweak from that. I think you've shown that you can not change your game model too much and still create as a result. Just gotta stay compact on the defensive end. Don't allow any silly mistakes or goals. And if you just do that, then you gotta Trust your offensive structure. Trust your plans in possession to keep what they've been doing over the last 10 minutes and put you in the right position to score. And then you just got to put the ball in the back of that. Easier said than done, obviously. But they're doing the right things to get in the right places to score. And for Coach Chad Rally, head coach of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, as you just saw on the sideline, what are the Irish looking to do to try to close this match about? Yeah, I think Notre Dame's just got to stay compact defensively. You know, there's a reason they were able to hold firm against Northern Illinois when Northern Illinois started pushing late on, and that's because they didn't do anything late on that Northern Illinois was able to capitalize off of. They didn't give the ball away in bad areas. They didn't, you know, they didn't half clear any balls. They made sure when they had the chance to get rid of it, they got rid of it and they had made sure they stayed in front of their man and didn't allow any shots to squeak by. And they just got to, don't need to commit too many numbers back, but you just got to make sure you stay in front of the ball at all times and you don't make any mistakes. Obviously, we talk about not exactly in-depth analysis, but I really think that's the number one key. You can't give Detroit Mercy any chances they wouldn't have gotten if you didn't hand them to them. Coach Riley has been decorated in his time with the Irish. Led them to an ACC championship in 2021. And that magical run to the NCAA semifinals. Has reached seven NCAA Tournaments in 10 years as a head coach. Nice idea by Radovoisa there to try to find Ento over the top. Just a little too much weight on that ball, though. Not an easy ball to hit, and Radovoisa did his best. The coach on the other side of the pitch in Kopenick has had success as well, however, as the Irish are looking to find a centering attempt here. That four will play it out. And a run here. By Rue, will result in that ball going out of play, but it will be an Irish toss-in. Kopenick in his first year with the Titans, but was previously a coach with Rolling Green and led them to two back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments. He's looking to build his team to compete regionally and nationally and was really looking forward to this game against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish to prepare his team for Horizon League matchups. Meanwhile, here's a run by Radvoiza. But there's a turnover there as the Titans looked to bring him back downfield. And a foul here near the end line. Results in Titans ball. We'll take a second look at that one. Take a look here, see if that ball went out, which is what the call on the field seems to be. And yeah, you can see it just barely goes over that line. And just as well, because Sylvain was off the races if he was able to get to that ball without the flag going up. So no foul there. I thought Ramsey's foul, Ramsey's fall might have been something, but instead it'll be a toss in by the Titans as they're gonna 
Looked to try to apply pressure, but Irish defense stays strong there and boots it way back down to Spradlin. 6.25 and counting left in this match. As the Irish look to hang on against this pesky Titans of Detroit Mercy. Detroit taking plenty of time on that throw. And we talk about no need to be too urgent. Make sure you get the right chance. And that's not it, though. Here's Baffour now. Ends up just booting it back to Spradlin. So the Irish unable to set up any offense after that initially promising attempt. But now Gettenbacher will have a long throw in. What a and throw he's going to try to fight Ento. Ento with a boot. Great save there by Spradlin. When's the, last, one. when's the last time you've seen a line breaking through ball throw in? <laughs> Kennenbacher, for the second time today, sees a window, a lane rather, in the Detroit Mercy defense and just puts it right through there, like threading a needle. And Ento's off to the races. Big save there by Spradlin, equal to the chance. Certainly not a scuffed shot by Ento. Spradlin's just equal to it. Back four now on a corner kick. But it's headed out, out of danger's way. And as you mentioned it, what a phenomenal throw in there by Gennenbacher. Another attempt there by Baffor, but that one will be redirected and sent out of play and will be another corner kick here for the Irish. And for Spradlin, a phenomenal save there right in front of Ento to keep his team in this game. Baffor with the corner, high and arcing, headed by the Irish. Recovered now by Green. Green will send it off to Redavoisa. Tries to set up another side attempt and a couple arching balls. That one will finally end up out of play and that's going to lead to another Irish corner. Notre Dame plenty happy with all these corners. Look at the, take their time. And these corners take, you see now, it's just in the process of walking to get this ball and lining it up, they've already taken 10, 15 seconds off the clock. It's going to keep on ticking as well. They keep on winning these. They keep on killing the clock effectively. Tenth quarter for the Irish. This one blocked in front and a high arching boot there by Bonneau. Goes over the net and will result in a Spradlin kick. Some dip on that ball by Bonneau, but in the end, the angle is just a little too difficult for him to really endanger the keeper from that distance and with that angle he had on it. So a really good performance so far tonight by Spradlin as you see by the graphic there. Five saves on this evening while facing off against 15 shots and the junior goalkeeper who came in abruptly in their last matchup against Marquette He's made the most of his opportunity to start so far today. And now a good setup here for Ento. Ento looking to hit Rue, but a slide tackle there as he will fall to the turf and Spellin will be able to recover that one. So Rue was looking for his sixth goal in three matches, but instead finds his way on the pitch. You know, Ento, Ento, great touch, does well to center it across the box and Rue just can't get his foot on it all the way. See a throw in now for the Irish. And they'll take their time with this one as well, no doubt. And so with the combination of the corners and that last attempt, the Irish have been able to burn off about three minutes off this clock by staying on the offense. And saying is sometimes the best defense is good offense, and that's exactly what Notre Dame did is here comes Detroit now, and that's a tactical foul if I've ever seen one. And so Solvain falls to the pitch, and that will lead to a free kick for the Titans. That foul given away by uh, Sean McDowd. A near certain sign that he's trying to close up shop here. He's only been on the pitch five minutes. Just another defender, another big body for moments like this where the ball's going to be going to the box. And it's a dangerous chance. So the boot now looking to set up a header attempt. Battling around in the box. It's ricocheting. That ball will finally get out of play, but a whistle is blown. So stressful looks there 
for the Notre Dame defense as there was a number of balls hit everywhere all, all over the place. Let's take a look there. It's sent across the box. A half volley there. Someone just popped in the air trying to get another body on and that one's just arm from Copeland goes up and goes over the head of Radovoisa. Radovoisa smart enough to know when you get contact there on the head from the arm, you go down. The ref's going to call it every time. Not that it wasn't a foul as is, but smart frame of mind from Radovoisa to make sure that the referee was aware that the contact was made. Notre Dame can take some time off the clock here. We talk about killing some time every time you get a free kick or a corner kick or a throw in. They took another 20 or so seconds off the clock there. So the Titans unable to capitalize on that chance there. As the Irish will look to find a way to burn off the last 80 seconds left on the clock. And continue their season streak of failing to be down at any point this year. This is where the waiting game begins. If you're Notre Dame, just trying to tick down the clock. If you get the ball, go to the corner flag. If not, Keep on trying to hammer it out. There's Alex Diak. And a high header there is sent off by Sylvain, but Dowd able to settle under that and then falls on top of it to try to burn a little bit of extra clock. A moment of panic there from Dowd, who I think initially maybe misjudged or maybe didn't communicate properly, but in the end he does well to retreat, stay under the ball, and catch it. Not an easy adjustment to make, at least when you've already committed yourself to coming off your line, but he does well to backtrack, find the ball, claim it, get to the ground. Let's see what Detroit has in their final roll of the dice here. 20 seconds left on the clock. Sylvain will look to follow after that one, but that one will end up out of play. It's going to be a throw in for the Titans. Here comes the keeper. They're going to try to go in fast. As you mentioned, the keeper's coming up the field. Five seconds left on the clock. Irish boot that one out of play. And that will do it. As the Notre Dame Fighting Irish win this one, 1-0 one against the Titans of Detroit Murphy. Impressive mental showing.